The next thing you need to know about healing is this. The next thing you need to know. Now it happened on a certain day as Jesus was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee. Wow. Out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem. You need to know something because uh, the, the, the backdrop of this story is that this is in Capernaum and I can show you the house. It's a Catholic building now over uh, Peter's house near the synagogue. And that's the place where they, they lowered the man later on. But why is it that uh, every doctor of the law, every Pharisee out of every town that's mentioned here came to Capernaum? Why? Because for the first time in history, for the first time in history, a Jewish man was cleansed. When Jesus came down the mountain, Jesus says, I will be thou cleansed. And Jesus says, see that you go and present the sacrifice that Moses commanded as a testimony to the priests. For the first time, there is a law in the book of Leviticus that was never used, that when a leper is cleansed, these are the procedures, but no leper was cleansed in Israel. Now you're thinking of Naaman. Naaman wasn't Israeli, he was a Syrian. No leper was cleansed ever in the Old Testament. Even though Leviticus says, when a leper is cleansed, these are the procedures you do for him. So finally, when Jesus cleansed the leper in Capernaum, Jesus says, go as a, and bring the gift, go to the priest as a testimony to them. What a testimony. They said this man was cleansed. And one of the signs they are waiting for is that the Messiah will cleanse the leper and open the eyes of the blind. That is what they are waiting for. And now, they all crowd around there. They jam packed into, the, into, into Peter's house. <laughs> Alright, you can still see, still see the house. You can see where they lowered the guy. Alright, it's, it's now in ruins, but you can, you, can, you can have an idea. I like to see a rock down there and think that probably that's where Jesus stood when He was preaching in the house. And they were jam packed into the house. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Whoa! We know the story that at, at, at the end, only one guy got healed, the guy who was lowered. But the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Another lesson we need to learn is this. Uh, it's not as if God is not supplying, it's that we are not receiving. And we're not receiving because many a times we believe wrong things. We believe our sin stops it, our parents' sin stops it. We are under an, a, a generation curse, you know. We believe that we must be extra holy to receive it. A lot of wrong thinking, amen. So the thing is this, the Lord is saying, amen that He wants to heal all of them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Is it like the sun? God made an oversized uh, supply but when God made the sun. Because the sun uh, sheds its warmth and its light on the earth. But scientists tell us a lot of the warmth and the light of the sun is wasted. They use the word wasted. And one day in heaven, we'll know that nothing is wasted. But, but why did God uh, uh, make an oversized supply? It's just His style. Amen. Amen. His style is that it's always 12 basket full left over. Amen. God doesn't know how to do small things. When you ask God to bless you with a job, He might give you a position. All right. When you ask God in faith, when you ask God knowing who He is, be careful what you ask. I asked God, I just want to get married because I was getting older already. Some years ago, you know, and, and I got married at... <clears throat> I got married at the 32. I married... Yeah. I'm married at 32. That, that, that is not... Many of you are encouraged. Thank you, Jesus! So my, my prayer was this. I used to pray for specifics, what I want in a woman. After that, nothing happened. Pray for specific, nothing happened. Amen? I did what the last, last week's sermon was all about, the butter system. God, I'll do this, but like, give me this kind of woman. That woman never came. Made a lot of mistakes here and there. Not a lot of mistakes, a few mistakes. Amen. And finally, I said, God, I just want to get married. Really, I just want to get married. Because as a pastor, I was, I was a church leader already. It's not good not to be married. Amen. And I know I don't have the gift of celibacy. You know? I know Pastor Mark has it, but he broke it. But I, 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 don't, ha I don't have the gift. I don't have the gift of celibacy. I said, you know, I, I just, I remember where I was. I was at a staircase in one of the, um, my, you know, HDB uh, flat. One of the staircase, okay? I still remember where I was, and I told God, I just want to get married, Lord. No more specifics, but I trust you, Lord. And I got Wendy. 
And have you seen her lately? Whoa, I, she still causes my heart to flutter. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. And then, behold, man brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed and they sought to bring in, lay before him, get dropped down. Now, they could not find how to bring him in because the crowd, they went up on the house top, let him down with his bed, threw the tiling into the midst before Jesus. It's very dusty. Picture it, all right? Jesus never offended when people, you see, faith is never too bold to please God. Faith is something that God is pleased. You know, you can never ask God for more than what He has given us. He gave us His Son. He that spared not His own Son, how much more will He with Him also freely give us all things? So you can never ask God too much. He loves it. Faith is coming to Him in spite of the fact you know you have failed, in spite of the fact that you know you, know you have shortcomings. But you still come to Him. That's faith. And when you ask Him for big things, you honour Him. God loves it. God not only loves the cheerful giver, but long before the cheerful giver can be a cheerful giver, God loves and delights in the confident asker. God is looking for confident askers. Amen. The more confident you are in asking God, the more God is thrilled with you. God is, more, God is pleased. He will bypass thousands of people to zero in on the person who is a confident asker. He loves it. Dusty in the midst. Jesus was preaching in the midst. Amen? But He loves it. When Jesus saw their faith, the Bible says. He saw their faith. He didn't, saw, he didn't see the interruption. I love it. He doesn't see all the... When He looks at you, right? He doesn't look at all your sins and your shortcomings. And you, you have plenty of it, so do I. But He sees your faith. At the woman, the issue of blood. She broke all kinds of laws, all kinds of Levitical laws to be out in public. But in spite of the fact she broke the law because she was, she was uh, bleeding and beyond the time, and she's not supposed to be out there. But when you touch Jesus, Jesus turned around and looked at her and He didn't see her law breaking. He didn't see her shortcoming. He didn't see even her disease. All He saw was this, your faith. Because she saw Him in His grace. He saw her in her faith. I love it. And He will never give you something from His back. That's the, that's the law. The law is seeing God's back always. Moses saw God's back. God says, I cannot, you cannot see my face and live. Amen? But I'll show you my back. And back means what? He's leaving. Bye, con Dios. Bye-bye. All right? The back. He cannot let her receive from the back. He wants her to know that He wants her to receive. He wants her to know it's okay. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He, he, he turned around and make her look at His face, the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad He turned around. And He told her daughter, she's the only woman in the Bible that Jesus calls daughter. There's another one called daughter of Abraham. But she's the one, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go into peace. By the way, the word there is go into peace. Amen. She was healed. Can I show you this verse? Show them, uh, uh, is it Mark? Yeah, he looked round about her to see that they had done this thing, but the woman fearing and trembling. By the way, fearing and trembling is a Hebraism, okay? When Paul says, I was with you in weakness, in fear and trembling, that doesn't mean he was like this. <laughs> you know? All right. But fearing and trembling is Hebraism for when you are captivated by the goodness of God. They use the word, you fear and tremble. Notice, she was not fearing and trembling because of fear. Fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her. And what was done in her? Healing. There's an awe, an awe, an awe that you feel. In fact, there's a verse in Jeremiah that says, And all the nations shall fear and tremble for all the goodness that I will give to Jerusalem. And that's the Hebraism again. Amen. May your life be such that it will cause people to fear and tremble in awe at what God is doing in your life. Amen. So here, Jesus said to her daughter, Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. I want to tell you one thing though. The word plague down there is the word mastix, all right, in, in Greek, which is the word for scourging. Literally, Jesus told her, be whole of your scourging. Be whole of your scourge. Even in English, we have the scourge, you know, of malaria, scourge of this, scourge of that. We use that word. That's why he was scourged. All right? And not only that, the first whole is not the same whole. Your faith has made you whole. That's the first one and be whole of your plague. Two, two Greek words that are different and you need to understand this. The first one, she was healed. Sozo, she was healed. All right? The next one is to be whole. Not only she was healed, but Jesus told her, if you go into peace, and the word is not N in Greek, but ais. Go ais. Go ais, peace. Which means, 
go into peace, enter into the realm of peace. He saw his face, right? It's not hard now. I want you to be well. Look at me. I want you to be well, Jesus says. Now go into that peace of knowing you are right with me. Amen. And be whole in every other area. Woo! <laughs> not only she's healed, she's made whole. Healing is not enough. Amen. You are healed of that bad condition. But God wants you whole. There's more to healing. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So the first thing you need to know is that don't, don't ask, is it my sin? Is it his sin? Is it my parents' sin? And don't judge people based on sin. And then go back to uh, Luke 5. It says that Jesus told the man, when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins have forgiven you. Got him into trouble. All the doctors of the law that were gathered down there, oh, they were not happy. But he says, he says what? Man, your sins have forgiven you. But it's obvious that he needed what? To walk. Okay, then Jesus, Jesus asked them, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Drop down and let me show you their reaction. The scribe says, who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? You see, let me tell you one thing about, about these Pharisees, okay? If they don't want to see, they don't want to see. Like, like people say about things about our church, right? You know? If they don't want to see, they don't want to see. You understand? When the light of the world comes in and he performs miracles and the, 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 the prophets of old says, the signs of the Messiah is that he will, uns- he will open the eyes of the blind and cleanse lepers. Okay? Now, when you see that happen, okay, obviously the light of the world has come. Okay? Then, there are, there are times they ask Him, show to us that you are the Messiah. Show to us you are the light. Now, you, the moment you ask that, it's no more a problem of the light. It's a problem of your eye. You got eye disease. You understand? It's no more a problem with the light. When you, the light is so abundant and all that, healings and all that, but you refuse to see, it's your eye, you're blind. You're blind. Now some people, right? You know, they tell you, you know, they do things that's not very nice, you know, they, they do things in your presence and you smell something bad, you know, and all that. And they say, don't worry, it's not smelly. Something wrong with their nose. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, when you're your pastor, Mark, you understand. All right. So, Jesus said, which is easier? Let me ask you a question, which is easier? To say to a man, your sins are forgiven? Or say, rise, take up your bed and walk? Because of time, I'm just telling you the story, okay? Which is easier to say? Now you can say, Jesus can say, it's easy for him. No, I'm talking about, when Jesus asks you the question, He expects you to answer based on the question. Which is easier to say? What is easier to say is your sins are forgiven. Because no one can see that outwardly. Right? Right? But to say, rise, take up your bed and walk. Wow, man, that is... But what you're saying is that this precedes this. The rising and taking up his bed, then Jesus looked at the man, that, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He told the man, rise, take up your bed and walk. The man stood up, took his bed, and he started walking. What does that mean? That means what? That he's... He has received forgiveness and is demonstrated outward. In other words, the moment you believe you are forgiven of your sins, amen, that's the time you will walk it out in your healing. That's why the psalmist says, bless the Lord and forget not all His benefits. What's the first benefit? Who forgives all your iniquities. Then who heals all your diseases. If you believe that He forgives only half, the rest you must catch it to confess, all right? Then you'll always be in that place where you don't believe you are forgiven of all. Therefore, you're not healed of all because it's tied up together. There's a revolution coming. There's a grace revolution coming, amen? Praise God. Okay, let's go to this right now in uh, Luke 14. Uh, Ma- Matthew 12, please. Matthew 12. Okay, next thing you know, need to know is this. Now when he had departed from there, he went to the synagogue. And behold, there was a man with a withered hand. Withered hand. Now, Luke, who is a doctor. By the way, Luke is the only Gentile in the entire Bible. Uh, uh, the only author who wrote the, the book of Luke. He's a Gentile. He's the only Gentile of all the writers of the Bible. And he's a doctor. He's a physician. He's a physician. So you notice that Luke will notice certain kind of things that a doctor would notice. 
In Luke's account of this story, the man with the withered hand, Luke says it is his right hand that was withered. Now, a right hand of a man is, is what he works with. If to, be, to have a withered right hand means what? Most likely than not, he suffered financially as well. So this healing would mean what? Restoring to him his means as well. In fact, most of Jesus' healings and all that, you would tell the person, rise, take up your bed and walk. And now, they got no more excuse for other people to take care of them. Right? So there was a man who had a withered hand and they asked him, saying, is it lawful? They asked Jesus, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath that they might accuse him? <laughs> can, you, can you see that they, they, they have no doubt he can heal? this eye disease. They have no doubt that he can heal. But you know what? They're saying to him now, do you dare to heal on the Sabbath and break the law? Then he said to them, what man is there among you who has one sheep and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? So this is my message. And this is the next thing you need to know, that how the Lord sees people who are sick. He never sees them in their faults. He see them like sheep falling into a pit. When someone falls into a pit, what do you do? Take them out. Don't go down there and say, you should have eaten healthier. You should have been exercising. No, He sees people. Oh, are we repenting? Are we changing our minds? Are we seeing the way Jesus sees? Don't ask, did this man sin or his? Now he says, see them as people like a sheep fall into a pit. Okay, look at verse 12. Of, of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. By the way, Jesus was angry. And it's the only record in Mark's account, Mark bring this up, bears that out, Mark 3 verse 5, when Jesus had looked around at them, same incident, with at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts. He said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other. It's the only account in all the four Gospels. I checked it many years ago, I checked it. It's the only place where it says Jesus is angry. The Holy Spirit records the word anger. Now you might think, when he overturned the money changers table or not, that he was angry, Pastor, and most likely than not he was angry, but it's not recorded. The word angry is not recorded there. And I know you can be angry with a child as a demonstration, but inwardly you're not angry. Amen? In discipline and all that. But the thing is this, there's no record there in the overturning of the money changers table and all that. But here, it records now not only anger, but grief. And the word grief here is the same root word used for don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I submit to you that what grieves Jesus then grieves the Holy Spirit now because they are one. And what grieves Jesus? You know, when they talk about the prostitute coming to Jesus and all that, or the tax collectors, you never find he is angry or grieved. Sin is sin, and Jesus hates sin. He loves the sinner. But you don't find Jesus being angry. But when it comes to legalism, trying a, the pretension to righteousness, trying to keep the law as if, when Jesus says, one of you have a sheep, and your sheep fall on the Sabbath day into a pit, you take it out, don't you? Who is more valuable, a sheep or a man? And Jesus looked at them with anger, grief at the hardness of it. Do you feel that? You would if you have Jesus in you. You like legalism and you get angry and you are grief. It grieves the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, words that are not gracious grieves the Holy Spirit. The verse before that, grief not the Holy Spirit. It's tied up together. Yes, God, 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 God is grieved with sin, yes, of course. But the context of the Gospels is very clear. And I think that self-righteousness is the mother of all sin. Okay, let's go to uh, Luke 14. Another incident. One Sabbath when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, that means he's a member of the Sanhedrin, he was being carefully watched. Nice, huh? To go to someone's house and know you're carefully watched. They scrutinize how you comb your hair, how you do your tie, how you brush your shoe, all right? It's not, it's not a good feeling. There in front of him was a man suffering from dropsy. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. 
So taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him away. Then he asked them, if one of you has a son or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, the New Living Translation says, if you have a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull him out? And they had nothing to say. So Jesus healed the man who had abnormal swelling. It's a water retention kind of disease or you know, dropsy. Got to do with water. He was swelling, abnormal swelling. And he was there in the synagogue. And Jesus could have been nice and proper because the VVIP invited him. You don't do things, you know, in the presence of VVIP. Amen. But Jesus, Jesus loved the man more than trying to impress people. Don't you just love Jesus? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's no respecter of persons. He's a respecter of faith. And he's, he illustrated like, if one of you has a son or an ox that falls into a well, now he's falls into a well. On the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull him out? Huh? In 1987, there was a baby girl, 18 months old. Her name was Jessica McClure. She fell into an eight-inch opening of a well. Her mother went in. They were poor, from a very poor family. And the mother went in to, to answer a call. And the little baby girl crawled and fell into this well that was 22 feet below ground. And she was stuck there. I know how many of you still remember because it had the whole world glued. Millions and millions and millions of people were watching the rescue work take place. And she was there for about two and a half days before she was rescued. And the only thing was her nose and her, 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 her head. There were some lacerations and all that. And she lost her little toe because of gangrene that set in. Um, uh, but besides that, she was okay. And she was smiling and all that. And the whole world was gravitated to this story. Imagine a child falling into a well and the whole world, you know, is looking. By the way, she's now a mother of two. And the world, you know, pouring the money and all that. And she's able to collect about 800,000 now that she's an adult and she's going to use it for her two children's education. Hallelujah. But the whole world cared about a child that fell. Even, even not just believers, okay? I mean, all kinds of people were glued and they were compassionate. And the whole world rejoiced when she came out, when she was rescued. And all the while, they heard her singing, we need a poo song inside there. One, if, if one of you has a son or a child or an ox that falls into a, wall, a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? Hmm? So have this attitude. Many times you pass by the, what, what Jesus' illustration, it's, oh, it's only meant for the Pharisees. Meditate on it. He sees people who are sick. This man with abnormal swelling. He didn't say, you should have taken more CoQ10. You should have taken more ginger. I got the best ginger drink for you. All that's fine, okay? All right, if, if you are selling organic stuff and all that, good, I eat organic food, so no problem, as much as I can. But, but please don't think that those things are supernatural. Naturally, exercise, please. When you exercise, your blood moves. When your blood moves, your brain works. That alone is good enough. All right, when your, your blood will push hopefully the blood or whatever out of your arteries and a lot of things happen, a lot of benefits happen when you are exercising. Okay, but you cannot trust that. If you trust that, all right, when you trust in the natural, you fall from the supernatural. Just remember that. Do that, but don't, your trust is in the Lord. 